Four days ago, I released a video called The Mixolydian Mode, The Sound of Rock. And in that video, I demonstrate a song that uses a Mixolydian Mode, which is She Said, She Said by The Beatles. Actually, by John Lennon, but it's by Lennon and McCartney. And I just opened my email up and I got a copyright claim from their publisher. And this is a copyright sharing claim, which means that they keep about 66% of the money and I theoretically get 33% for the video. If you look closer at the copyright summary and status, you can see the content has been manually identified by the claimant, which means somebody at Sony Publishing is looking at YouTube channels specifically ones with a lot of subscribers, to see if there is any type of copyright claims that they can make so they can rip off the YouTubers. How do I know this? Because I've talked to people that work at all the different publishers. The other thing to notice from the copyright summary is the timestamp. It shows you the time of when it happened. And during that time, from 117 to 142, all I played was the melody on the acoustic guitar. I did not sing the song, nothing else. I played the melody. There's also another button here that says select action. If you click that, it brings you to a page that says trim out segment, replace song, or mute song. Those are your three options. You can actually just remove that part from the video, which happens to be the part where I'm demonstrating how this scale is used. Now, how do you teach music without using examples? If there's ever been an instance of fair use, this is it. Now, I understand when my videos are claimed by composers, if I use it on what makes this song great and I play the actual recording, or if I do a cover of it and I sing the lyrics, I have no problem with that. But the idea that there are people in New York and LA sitting in offices whose actual job is to go through YouTubers' videos to try and find these copyright claims, many of which are bogus like this. They get paid like collection agencies do. The more things that they bring in, I mean, that's what their job depends on. It depends on actually finding these things, even if they have no legitimate claim to it, and getting the money from the YouTuber. The ironic thing is that I also used Norwegian Wood, which Lennon wrote, which also uses the Mixolydian mode in the same video. But they didn't claim that. You know why? Because they already got the money from the first claim. This is what my inbox looks like if I type in YouTube copyright. It goes on for pages and pages and pages. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. If you try to dispute it, you see this form come up. It says, dispute claim, she said, she said, mono, 2009 remaster. Then it says, remember that the following are not valid reasons to dispute a content ID claim. Number one, I own a copy of the song or video. Number two, I'm not making money from the video. Number three, I gave credit to the copyright owner. And then it has a box that says, my dispute isn't based on any of the reasons above. I would still like to dispute this content ID claim. So here's the catch. If you dispute it and you lose, which you will do by trying to fight the Beatles, then they give you a copyright strike. If you get three strikes on your channel, they take your channel down. They delete it. Doesn't matter if you have a million and a half subscribers, a hundred subscribers, 5,000 subscribers, they take your channel down. So they use fear to control YouTubers so that they don't do this. I have friends that work at labels that tell me, oh man, we make so much money from YouTubers because they can't fight the stuff because they don't dare fight it. Now, I have no problem with the Beatles making billions of dollars. I love the Beatles so much that I named one of my children Lennon after John Lennon. But this is totally bogus. This is just a complete money grab. This is the most obvious example of fair use I can think of. But you know what? They don't care. YouTube doesn't care. All they care about is staying out of it. So they put all the burden on the YouTube creators. 
YouTube doesn't have to get into lawsuits against the record labels or the publishing companies. In this instance, the publisher is EMI or Sony ATV, who bought out EMI about eight years ago or so. They own the Beatles catalog. I come on here about once a year and I talk about this. Like I said, I don't have a problem 99% of the time when my videos are demonetized. I don't care about it. The artist should get paid. But this is a teaching video. My videos are not normally like this. I'm much more in control typically. I just lost it when I saw this today. I just did. I'm sorry. If you want to support my channel, subscribe, ring the bell, pick up something in my store. I've got my book, The Beato Book. I've got t-shirts. I've got mugs. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. Check out my new ear training course at beatoeartraining.com. And if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. You can find it on my website at www.rickbeato.com. Thank you so much for watching and listening to my rant. Oh,